and welcome back to another video. Now today, what I have for you is a monster of a project, the Takeum King Tiger, in 1 30th of scale. Uh, now this kit was an absolute monster of a kit. Uh, as you can see, I think there are 15 sprues included um, in the box. Now uh, speaking of the box, the box is very large. Um, it took up almost my whole workspace. As you can see, I can barely fit it into the frame of the picture there. And even though there were so many parts, I must say that each of them, each of the sprues, um, were very detailed. I was very surprised with the amount of detail on the sprues. I was expecting there to be um, lacking in detail and a lot of flashing, but there really weren't. So I was very pleased with that. Now to talk about the direction manual, I must say it was very good. Um, also, one thing that I really loved about this was it had two printed color sheets of paper. They weren't paper, they are almost photo paper in the back. That had all of the painting charts for the interior and the exterior. And it had a multiple uh, painting guides you could follow too. Also, I think I said this earlier. There, uh, I was using a new camera when I was filming this. So if you see anything that isn't exactly... Um, the color isn't matched and it looks a little blurry. That's because I was still figuring out how to get used to the camera. I fixed the issues in a little in the next few clips, but um, for the beginning ones, they're a little bit too yellow in my opinion. So sorry about that. Now I began the build process with the instruction of the interior. Now it was very straightforward, although I must say it was very long and. I was very glad to be done with it. I have to say it wasn't an enjoyable build though. There were a lot of cool techniques that I thought were very interesting and most of the parts I had never seen before. But this is definitely one of those kits that you need to be following the directions for. <laughs> Otherwise you're not going to get very far. After I completed the whole chassis assembly, I painted the um, I painted the whole interior with an oxide red color. Um, I, they actually sell specific colors for oxide red. I just mixed my own using red and black. So if you want a more accurate color, I would do actually buy the primers they have made specifically for doing this. These types of tanks and interiors for them. But the method I did worked as well. Um, the red was mixed in, I think, a 3 to 1 mix, racing, mixing ratio with the black. And you'll see that it really isn't that great. It could have been a little lighter, I would think. But it's okay for the time being. I'm, I'm happy with it. I then painted it over with uh, Tamiya X2 Gloss White. Not sure why they painted the interior of, this, of these tanks gloss white, or just white in general. I really don't know why they would have done that, but... Um, the painting chart and the kit said to do that, and so did a few sources I found online. I then did some touch-up work on the 
on the, after the white paint had gone down, I added some details with the Vallejo NATO Black, and I painted the ammo canisters with model killer German Field Grey World War II. I then started to work on the turret. There's really not much to say about the build process of this kit. As I said before, it was very complicated, but also straightforward at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, but you can just take in all of the me building plastic parts. Um, I had three hours of video editing to do. <laughs> um, editing three hours of video clips of me putting together parts. So if you see some things that I didn't show in the build process that you want uh, to know how I did, you can just ask me that in the comments or email me. My email is in the About Me page on my channel. Um, I then painted the finished turret using the same method I had done before, uh, the Tamiya X2 Gloss White. And then I went ahead using the sponge method, the sponge dabbing method. I dabbed some Vallejo Silver Paint onto the surface of the model. And I did the same with some chocolate brown paint, although I didn't have the um, camera rolling when I did that. Again, I touched up the um, small parts, as um, the seats and a few boxes and general things with some Vallejo NATO black and the interior was complete <laughs> the exterior um, the whole shell of the model had a lot of very interesting parts I must say um, the detail for the weld seams was very nice and pronounced I didn't have to do anything um, with those I thought they were I, thought, I was very pleased with that and it also the kit also included some mesh for the uh, fan covers and grill plates and I glued on all of the accessories as well I then glued on the side skirts and placed the finished shell on top of the chassis. I then started to work on the turret exterior, which is a very straightforward build, as I've already said multiple times. Very straightforward. And I glued the small little plastic clear parts into the cupula, cupola, I think that's how you pronounce that, and placed it onto the finished turret exterior, the finished turret exterior. There were a lot of small details on this kit, and I didn't actually show all of them. Um, one thing I did decide to do, though, was leave the commander's hatch open, and another air vent hatch, I'm not really sure what that is, uh, you'll see, there are two hatches open. I'm not sure if it was realistic to have both hatches open um, in wartime, but I just decided to have them open anyway. And as I have figures for this kit, um, I think it'll be a nice thing that you'll be able to see them inside doing whatever they're doing. The barrel is molded in one part, which is very nice, although there is a mold line seam um, down the center on each side of it that needs to be removed with some sanding. I then uh, proceeded to build all of the road wheels and drive wheels. Um, it really wasn't that bad. After I got them all cleaned off the sprue, they pretty much just snapped together. I actually didn't have to use any cement for these. Um, they pretty they just snapped together, as I said before, which is really nice, I must say. I honestly had a lot of fun putting these together.
I then glued them to the base or chassis, whatever it's called. And when that was done, I got ready for painting. Now the paint I'll be using is from AK Real Colors. It is a German army paint set um, from the years 1943 to 1945. It comes in this really cool little box and has three colors included. I'll go through the colors in a moment. The colors are dark yellow, olive green, and red brown. Um, the jars were a little smaller than I would have expected, but even for such a large kit, this really surprised me. I really didn't need that much paint. Um, I started with dark yellow, and I didn't even use half the jar, which really surprised me. So I'll have plenty to build other tanks with, or paint other tanks. I really enjoyed this paint. I must say this is probably the best water-based paint I have ever sprayed out of my airbrush. I had no clogging whatsoever, and that stuff really dries as soon as it hits the model, so... You really don't have that much work time, I would I must say, but I really do recommend buying from them. There's a link to get that paint off Amazon in the description of the video. As I said before, it sprays really well. I didn't have any clogging. Um, there weren't any runs. It lays on very nice and thin, nice and flat. And um, sorry if the color distortion isn't exactly correct. Um, you can't really see the true color of it on the video, at least from the screen I'm looking at. It's a little bit darker in person. And it really is the perfect color for these types of German tanks. I then went ahead with some olive green. Um, now, this is my first time painting German camo, and camo on a tank in particular, so this is really a learning process for me. Um, but I just followed the exact um, paint chart, or I based my painting, or camo painting, off of the paint charts included with the kit in the direction manual. And I kind of ended up with a hybrid between two different ones. Um, it's not really, I'm not really modeling a specific tank. It's more of a what-if sort of tank, even though the numbers are do belong to a specific tank. It's more of a what-if tank. So I added details from the two tanks to really make one that I really liked. Uh, my airbrush is an Iwata Eclipse HPCS. You can look at my review of that up in the top hand corner or in the video description. I'll probably have the video there. You can also just find it on my channel page. The most important thing I found when spray painting camo on airplanes and tanks in general um, is to just take your time with it. Don't rush. Don't apply too much air pressure. Um, make sure to thin the, paint, thin the paint a lot so you don't have any splattering. I learned that the hard way. Um, <laughs> and just take your time with it. And you can also you can always touch it up if you don't like how something came out. After the first base coat of green was done, I really liked the result. I was very happy with it. Um, so I decided to move on to red, the red-brown paint that is, that is included with the kit. Uh, this was done in the same fashion as I did with the green. Um, you just I found you have to be more careful uh, with the brown splattering and not coming um, thinly enough through the airbrush. So you're going to want to thin it much more. I'm not sure why this is, just the color around in general and darker colors um, tend to... I tend to have more clogging issues with them than I do with lighter colors. Not sure if that's just me though.
after the camo had finished, I was a bit iffy about it, but um, you'll see what I do in the future to fix that. Then what I did was I mixed a lighter color. Um, I think I mixed white with the original base coat, the dark yellow. And I placed it on a sponge and I gently dabbed that mixture onto the model to simulate chipped paint that hadn't really gone down to the surface of the metal or that hadn't rusted yet, just slightly chipped off in storms or people walking over the surface. And I tried to air, um, add that in places that would be more heavily worn. Uh, one thing I forgot to do before I did the chipping was apply the decals, but that wasn't very um, very bad. I just went ahead, applied the decals with some MarkFit decal solvent uh, to remove the clear backing. And I went overhead and chipped over them. I then went ahead to um, add some rust simulation. I went ahead with some model color chocolate brown, and I gently dabbed that over the areas um, where the paint would have gotten worn off completely and bare metal would have been showing, so it would have rusted. Then I decided to paint the uh, spare tracks and also all the spare tools on the kit with some gray-black. I, I can't really remember the color. I believe it was gray-black, but I'm not sure. So sorry about that. Just a grayish black color I found. And I just brushed, fit, brushed this, as I said before, all over the spare treads and the uh, tow cables and tools. We'll add a rush, rust wash over them um, using some... I believe it was chocolate brown, red paint, and yellow paint, all diluted into one mixture uh, to add this really dark-ish orange color. I'm not necessarily sure if it was an orange color, I can't really remember, and the camera might be doing some color distortion, but um, I just really eyeballed this, although I do recommend checking out AK's Rust Wash. Um, I think that would have worked much better than my homemade concoction, so... Um, Gently, de definitely check that out. After I had done, you'll see it, it really wasn't that rusty of a wash, I must say. I kind of just added the simulation. Um, I'll probably come back to that in a little while. Then I went ahead with some black wash. Um, this just mixed with one part black paint and five parts um, floor polish. Uh, now you're probably really wondering why use floor polish. Um, I don't really know. I just tried it out one day and it really helped the paint to flow better. It didn't um, remove the paint from underneath and it also kind of protected the wash from coming off and chipping off easily. So I pretty much just smothered the surface of the model on this. Um, definitely focusing on the areas uh, that would be shaded and not as visible. And I went ahead with a paper towel and I didn't wipe it off. I just decided to dabble it and I really think that helped add the model, add another layer of realism to the model. Um, it really added some color distortion there. And I did this for the whole model. And I think it really makes the model, if I'm honest. Um, it does darken down the paint colors a little bit, but it really adds a nice modeling effect that I think really looks very realistic, in my opinion at least. And I really like the way it looks. Then what I did was I made a mixture of, I believe it was mud, or garden soil, dirt, or um, dirt, wa water, and Mod Podge mat. And then I mixed this until it was a very fine paste, um, almost like a terrain paste. And I dabbled this over the surface of the model. Now I was debating whether or not I should do this. Um, in the past I have gone uh, a little bit overkill with mud paste and mud washes in general, uh, but I think I did the right amount. I was definitely focusing on the areas where the treads would have flung mud up on the model more.
And as I will be adding this into a diorama later, I just thought it'd be a good idea overall to add a tiny bit of weathering with using real dirt. While the mud paste was drawing, I decided to make start with the treads. Um, now the treads are a bit tricky. Um, you have to use this little form that they included. Um, and keep in mind, they're all separate links. So the form they give you is really nice. You pretty much just glue the treads onto the form and then break them off after you're done. Um, it's time consuming, but it's, it's really nice that they... Oh, sorry, my mic died there for a moment. <laughs> Anyway, then I went ahead with some Model Keller uh, Chocolate Brown just to add a base coat on the tracks and uh, I glued them to the model. And then applied the same mud paste that I had used previously to the treads and the road wheels. Now the color of the mud was kind of off. Um, the dirt in my area is more of a reddish clay color. Um, so that was really just my uh, the color of the soil. And to fix this, what I did was I painted a mixture of diluted chocolate brown and black um, with some water and to make this more of a dark brown color. And I just dabbled this onto the areas where the mud had been. And it really helped to darken up uh, the mud texture. It really added uh, a much better color, I think. And I was pleased with that. I then just went ahead to some finishing touches. I painted the tools. Um, I painted the end of the wire cutters or wire. I don't know what they are called. Uh, just with some flat red. Anyway guys, I really do hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, I had a lot of fun making it. Also, sorry about not being around lately. Uh, I had a lot of school stuff to work on, and I didn't have much time to build models for a little while there. But over spring break, I was really able to get a lot of work done on this kit. I'm really happy with how it came out. And the, if you would like to support my channel, the best way to do that is subscribing. And well guys, thanks for watching. Happy modeling, and stay safe. Thank you.